Hi, I'm Julia. In this program, we're going to look at the nutrients in our food. What they are, what they actually do for us, and whether we're eating too much or not enough of them. Let's kick off with the basics. Why do we eat? Well, usually it's because we're hungry. And why are we hungry? Well, that's our body's way of telling us that we need energy. Nutrients are chemical substances that our bodies need to stay alive and reproduce. All of this food here, even the water, is just a jumble of different chemicals. Basically, nutrients carry out three functions in the body. They provide energy, they maintain and repair the body, and they regulate body processes such as muscle and nerve functioning. Nutrients are usually divided into six groups. Proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals and water. Each nutrient has a vital and different role to play in the body. Let's start off by looking at protein. Protein is a bit like a pile of toy building blocks where substances called amino acids combine to make a protein. Each different colour block is like a different sort of amino acid. In fact, amino acids have often been referred to as the building blocks of life itself. There are 20 different amino acids. Nine of these can't be made by our bodies. They're called essential amino acids. The other 11 that can be made in the body are called non-essential amino acids. When you eat a piece of steak, the protein is broken into a variety of amino acids. They're then absorbed and used by the body for a whole lot of functions, like to make bones, teeth and blood, to form enzymes which act as catalysts to speed up vital chemical reactions such as digestion, to form antibodies and hormones which also do essential work in the body, to help maintain the proper water balance in the body and to provide secondary energy when the body has run out of primary energy from carbohydrate and fat. Foods that contain all the essential amino acids are called complete proteins. Complete proteins are found in meat, poultry, fish, eggs, cheese, milk and soya beans. Foods that contain only some of the essential amino acids are called incomplete proteins. These are mainly nuts, grains, legumes, seeds and vegetables. However, if foods with incomplete proteins are combined, foods such as bread and cheese, oats and milk or rice and milk, the value of the combined protein will increase. So if you're a vegetarian that doesn't eat animal products, you need to make sure that you get all the essential amino acids by combining a wide variety of foods such as nuts, grains, seeds, legumes and vegetables. So how much protein should we eat for good health? Well, national health authorities recommend for adults a daily intake of 0.75 of a gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. Women who are pregnant or breastfeeding will require slightly more. For those in the 4 to 18 year age group, 1 gram per kilogram of body weight is recommended. So if you weigh 60 kilograms, you'll need 45 grams per day. That comes to around 170 grams of steak. To get 45 grams of protein from eggs, you'll need around 370 grams of them. And to get 45 grams from peas, you'll need 650 grams of them. But remember, excess protein is stored as body fat, or in extreme circumstances, it's used as a secondary energy source when not enough carbohydrates and fats are being consumed.
Carbohydrates are the body's preferred energy source, and they provide the most energy in our diets. Mostly, carbohydrates are produced in green plants by a process called photosynthesis, which is the combination of carbon dioxide found in the air we breathe, water and sunlight. The major carbohydrate containing foods in the human diet are cereals, sugars, root crops, pulses, vegetables, fruit and milk products. There are two types of carbohydrates, simple and complex. Simple carbohydrates are sugars found in foods like fruit, vegetables, honey and milk. They have names like glucose, fructose and lactose. Common sugar comes mainly from sugar cane and sugar beet and is called sucrose. Complex carbohydrates containing starch and dietary fibre, as well as good amounts of vitamins and minerals, are found in fruits, vegetables, cereals, pulses and grains. Unfortunately, in the rich developed countries, we eat far too much simple carbohydrate. The sugars in foods like soft drinks, juices, cakes, sweets and canned foods. As well, we often process our cereals and lose a lot of the goodness like the vitamins and the fibre in the process. This happens when we produce white bread, white rice and cornflakes for example. So by eating whole grain breads and brown rice and fresh cereal, you'll be better off because they also supply more fibre, vitamins and minerals. Carbohydrates are the best way to get energy because they're more quickly and efficiently converted to energy. Even when energy comes from fat, carbohydrate is still needed to use the fat properly. So how much carbohydrate should we eat? National health authorities generally recommend that 40 to 45% of our energy intake should come from complex carbohydrates, with only 15% coming from sugars or simple carbohydrates. So in total, about 55% of our energy intake should come from carbohydrates. The balance should come from fats and protein. However, too many of us are eating too little complex carbohydrates and too much fat, which means we're probably consuming more energy than we need. Although dietary fibre, with some exceptions, is a type of carbohydrate, it's not digested in the small intestines like other nutrients. Instead, some of it is actually broken down in the large intestine. It does a lot to keep us healthy though, so it's worth looking at separately. Basically, fibre is the cell wall of plants, the skin and flesh of fruit and vegetables, and the outer covering of grains such as wheat and rice. There are two types of fibre, called soluble and insoluble. Soluble fibre slows down the rate of digestion to prevent carbohydrates from being absorbed into the bloodstream too quickly. Insoluble fibre can't be broken down by our digestive system, but it helps keep the bowel in good working order as it helps our food waste to move easily and quickly through the body. It seems that the more fibre we eat, the better it is for the health of our large intestine especially for preventing bowel cancer, which is one of the most common diseases in the rich countries. Eating lots of fibre can also help protect us against hemorrhoids and constipation, which are common dietary related illnesses in children. Also, some types of fibre seem to have a good effect on our cholesterol level and therefore help protect against heart disease. It's important to make sure that we get our dietary fibre from a wide variety of foods to make sure we get a balance of the different fibres. For example, wheat bran contains lots of insoluble fibre, while oat bran has high amounts of soluble fibre. 
Fibre also has the effect of making us feel full for longer. Somehow, the fibre causes the stomach to empty itself more slowly. We've seen that some carbohydrate foods are better for us than others. A general working rule is, the less processed, the better. The closer a food is to its natural state, the more likely it is to have retained its essential nutrients and fibre, without too much hidden stuff being added. Lately fats, also known as lipids, have received a lot of bad press. And for good reasons. Because of this we've seen an explosion in low fat, fat free and reduced fat foods. Despite this fear of fats, fats are an essential nutrient needed for good health. Fats help with the development of cell membranes and hormones and act as insulation to help retain body heat. Deep inside our bodies, Fat layers help to protect our organs from injury. The fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E and K need fats to help with their absorption and transport throughout the body. Fats also provide texture and flavour in foods and help us feel full and satisfied after we've eaten. So what's the problem? Well as it turns out there are several different types of fats and some of them are better for us than others. As well, there's little doubt that too many people take in far too much fat. The amount of fat in the Western diet, especially fat from meat and dairy products, is excessive for many people. On average, fats provide about 40 to 45% of our total energy or kilojoule intake, although there can be wide variations between individuals. However, most national health bodies recommend that fats should only provide around 30% of our total energy intake. Let's look a little more closely at fats, or lipids, as they're often called these days. Depending on which lipids are present, the fats will be solid or liquid, saturated, monounsaturated or polyunsaturated. We hear a lot about saturated and unsaturated fats, but what does it mean? Saturated fats come mainly from animal foods, like meat and dairy products, but they're also found in a few vegetable fats, such as palm oil and coconut oil, and in lots of takeaway foods, and processed foods, such as confectionery, snacks and pastries. Most commercial biscuits are full of them. Like other fats, saturated fats are high in kilojoules and eating too much of them will not only cause us to put on weight but will increase our cholesterol level and therefore the risk of heart disease. Now most of us have heard of cholesterol, but what is it and what exactly do we need to know about it? Well for one thing, we all need it. Cholesterol is a fatty substance produced naturally by the liver and it circulates in our blood in different forms. It is essential for hormone, brain and nerve development. Some cholesterol comes from food, but mostly our livers make all we need. So what's the fuss? There are two types of cholesterol. Low density cholesterol, which is considered to be bad, and high density cholesterol, which is considered to be good. This is because it returns to the liver where it's removed from the body. So why is that good? The more saturated fat we eat, the more bad cholesterol builds up in our blood. This causes fatty deposits to build up in blood vessels, making it harder for blood to flow through. And that can cause major heart problems. Monounsaturated fats, on the other hand, tend to reduce the level of total and bad cholesterol and increase good cholesterol levels in the body. Polyunsaturated fats are in safflower and sunflower oils, fish, nuts and seeds. Like monounsaturated fats, they are better for us than saturated fats. They tend to reduce the levels of both total and bad cholesterol, as well as maintaining the levels of good cholesterol in the body. 
However, not all polyunsaturated fats are the same as far as our health is concerned. There are two types of polyunsaturated fats, omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Both are essential for a balanced diet. In recent years, we've learnt that we eat far too little of one of these, the omega-3 fatty acids. They're important for brain function, heart function and retinal function. By the way, the retina is a layer of cells at the back of the eye. Omega-3s are found in fish such as salmon, sardines and mackerel, in flax oil and in new products like this which substitutes for butter and margarine. Omega-3s are also found in walnuts, soybeans and to a lesser extent in dark green vegetables such as spinach. So it's easy to make them part of your diet. Vitamins are involved in some way 